Welcome back to Davos video and our tutorial on building your own Wikidee pad reference. Today, we're going to be going over how to create a table. Let's get started. So here in editor mode, let's scroll down to our new header, creating a table. To create a table on your page, you're going to type this command here and hit enter. Then you're going to press tab, then type your information, separating columns with the vertical line character. This is not I or I, and you can see the difference here. Fortunately, in this particular font, they do not look similar. All right, so let's go over some examples of this. We're going to type in our code that we saw here. So two less than are greater than signs with the vertical line. I'm going to hit enter and tab. Let's put in the number one. We want to separate our information in cell one from information that will follow it. So this is going to be some sort of important information. So let's do this four more times. So now I have this done. We're going to press enter again. We're going to hit backspace and then we're going to close out this uh, command with two of our greater than less than signs. Now, what is this going to look like exactly? Let's go back into preview, control shift space, and let's click on creating a table. Okay, you can see our table here. We have our numbers in their own cell here, and then we have our important information here. The cool thing about this is you can separate your information as you will, and Wikidepad generally does a pretty good job of orienting the cells relative to the amount of text you have in those cells or other things. In another video, we're gonna go over how to import images into Wikidepad, so look forward to that. So if we go back to our editor view, let's go here and let's add another cell. I don't want my wiki D pad here to turn into a function as you just saw up here in the left of my tree. So here at the beginning, I'm gonna put a backward slash. And in a minute, when the tree repopulates, that wiki D pad page will disappear. All right, so we've got informations in column one, column two, and column three. Let's go back and check it out. So I'm pretty sure that you guys can already see how useful tables could be in organizing certain kinds of information. But let's do another example. And this time, let's organize our information in a different way. This time, we want our numbers to be here on the top. And we want our information to appear in the columns relative to the number that they are associated with. Now, this gets a little bit more complicated because clearly you can see that we have to type out all the information here. And if you're putting in paragraphs or other things, it can get rather complicated especially if you only have short little column numbers at the top like we do. Let's close it up and check out how it looks. All right, so those are two pretty useful, pretty common ways to use this table function. And there are two different ways that you can stack information in a table within the same cell. And I'm going to show you what exactly what I'm talking about here in just one second. The first way you can do that is you can use the backspace symbol just the one. I'm using two here so that it uh, appears also in preview. Otherwise, the backspace symbol, if you just use one, won't show up in the preview, so I use two. You can use the backspace symbol at the end of a phrase or sentence to nullify the function of dividing the cells into a new row. And we're going to show you examples of both of this. Number two, you can use the break function to nullify the function of dividing the cells into a new row. The benefit of this message is that the text remains on the same row and directly related to the text preceding it. So let's show you what we're talking about. So example one, we're gonna put our opening table function, hit enter, tab out. And here we're gonna use our backs, uh, backward slash function, we're hit enter. I'm gonna tab it over so it lines up with our vertical text. Now this time I'm going to show you what we mean about using this break function here. And instead of our backward slash, I'm going to put in a less than greater than sign, the br function, and I'm just going to continue typing. So let's close out our function and let's check out how this looks. So if you want to build paragraphs inside your text, or stack information like names, dates, etc. This is a pretty easy way to do that. Personally, I prefer using this uh, break function method because like it says, 
it's really easy when the text remains on the same row. Everything is kind of in line with itself. You can see that here, and then you're not losing track of it, different kinds of information. All right, let's quickly do another example. Let's see how that turned out. All right, not so bad. So we've got our first column here with one, two, and three stacked on top of each other and our paragraph here with all of that stacked as well. You can also create a table that interprets tabs as the delineating lines to separate cells. Now the function here is the same, except you're gonna put a T at the beginning of your table. This tells Wikidpad that you want to delineate between cells with tabs. All right, so you can see here, we have our tabular table. It's just what I'm gonna call it. And we have our one with a tab between one and the word this is an example of how you can. Two, tab, stack text inside the cell with a break function, same cell. One other useful thing with tables is that you can add pictures to your tables, which enables you to write text on the sides of the image, something you can't ordinarily do in the Wikidpad program. We're gonna go over this later in another video. So stay tuned for that. Just as a note, as a personal preference, I like to put a basic table around my table of contents in order to differentiate it from the rest of my page. So if you actually scroll up and look at how we put in our table of contents, you can actually see our table markers here. You wanna see what that looks like without it, left bracket, TOC, semicolon, right bracket. And here you can see that it's just a free floating table of contents. So that's my personal opinion. I like to have a basic table surrounding my table of contents. It makes it seem more consolidated and it's easier for me to keep track of everything. So here we'll just make a quick note. All right, guys, that's all we have for creating tables today. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.